Okay, I'm recording. Okay, now let's continue. So there is this uh, Jacobian. Uh, I think there's a missing uh, there's a missing file here. Let me just say uh, I have to duplicate this. There's a missing slide. There should be a slide here for forward kinematics. Okay, and in the forward kinematics, it is about control. We don't control the movement of the hand of the robot. So we say movement of the robot hand given, and we say here, just say given, given uh, joint angles. Okay, so that's, and then here will be, it is not about the inverse. It is about the joint angles. Okay, let me just delete this. And now the joint angles will be, what is your X? The X is equal to F, a function of Q. Okay. That's it. That's a forward kinematics. So in the way we are looking at, uh, in general, that is the equation. But the way we are looking at our equations here is that we write it in terms of hx and hy, for example. Then we'll just write it like that. So you have hx comma hy. And this is your output given a function given uh, theta one, okay, we put in it, uh, and then theta two for the two link robot. Okay, so it could be that when you have two links robot, or you can also have a one link robot where you only have the input is only join one. Okay. So if that if that happens, then you have and that's the case. So forward kinematics is a function input of the joints. Okay, you input the joints. It could be Q. Q is the general term for all the joints. It could be theta one, theta two, theta three, and everything. And X is the uh, output the hand position it could be x y and z x y and z yeah so it's just a general uh, vector uh, the general symbol that we assign so in the case if you have only one joint so you input theta one okay one joint and then you have a hand position hx and hy position of the hand in terms of x h and uh, x and y because these are the planar robot that we're considering so now if the joint if the number of links increases, that means there are two joints now instead of one joint. So now you have two inputs, theta one and theta two. And then now you have, again, the hand position X and the hand position Y in terms of the plane row. That's forward kinematics. Okay. Now we go to, let's see here, the inverse kinematics. I want to show inverse kinematics first before I go. I, I compose the Jacobian. Okay, so now our inverse kinematics says that instead of the forward kinematics, Q, the given Q, you compute the X. We want to compute Q given the X. Okay, but then there is no such thing as Q because it is not linear. This Q equal to a function given x is not linear, okay? Well, that inverse function is not linear. So <clears throat> we wanted, but there is a linearity uh, function. When you express the small increment of q with respect to 
the small increment of x. If you do that, there is the Jacobian that expresses that. Okay, There is a Jacobian that expresses that re linear relationship, meaning to say that the small increment of the x is equal to the Jacobian multiplied by the small increment of the joint angles. Okay, if you remember, again, this is the forward kinematics of Q with respect to X, okay? So given this relationship, if you take the derivative on both sides, okay, take the differential on both sides, you take, am I, okay, I am, I am recording, right, okay. You take the differential of that, you take the differential of this, now a, really, a linear matrix, a, a linear relationship will occur if you take the partial in each side of the equation, okay? This is not linear. This forward kinematics is not linear, but if you take the derivative on both sides, a Jacobian matrix that expresses the relationship that is linear when you take the increment of x, that is relationship of the increment of the x, which is the hand movement against the increment of the joint movement. And that is expressed in terms of the Jacobian matrix, okay? So now let's go here. So therefore, the, from this relationship, okay, maybe I should put it there, that, okay, let me help myself. Okay, let's enter here one more. Okay, so here. That's the inverse kinematics. We start first with the linear relationship okay, of Here. So let me do this. With delta x. That's linear and this is not the same wish. Okay. Okay. So that's the relationship of the forward kinematics in terms of taking the partial derivative at each side of the equation. Or maybe I should just start from the forward kinematics. Okay, let me do that and then put from here so that there's a continuity. So we say x is equal to now the function f remove the delta and q. Okay, there. So from the forward kinematics of x as a function of q, now you take the derivative at each side of the equation, you get the relationship partial of q is equal to Jacobian times partial, partial of x is equal to j times partial of q, okay? So now this, this relationship is linearized now by taking the derivative at each side of the equation. Now, if you take the inverse, okay, take the inverse, that means the J inverse on the other side, put this on the other side. Okay, let me put this one now. I so think I'm ready now. Okay, so if you want to, you want to now take this Jacobian inverse on the other side. So now this is that, okay? And then this one goes on the other side. And then this one is the J inverse. So that is the relationship now of the inverse kinematics. So now, given the hand movement, you will be able to compute the, the joint movement in order to achieve this hand movement by the inverse of the Jacobian matrix, okay? Now, in order to put a control part in this equation, okay, we replace the partial of X with a control law, which is this one, okay? The control law 
in our case is, is that the gain, which is Kp, multiplied by the x desired or the desired hand movement, wherever your hand wants to go. And then xA is the actual movement of the hand. Okay. This one is uh, stated by the user. Okay. While xA is actually computed by the forward kinematics. Okay. The function in terms of the Q. Okay. That's why I have to discuss with you this one because it is an important information. We need to know where is the head given the current joint angles, okay? And then that current position of the hand is compared against the desired hand position where is that is defined by the user, okay? For example, your hand is currently now in this one, and then the user specifies the hand to be here, okay? So that means here, this is your XD, Desired X, where your hand needs to go. And th this is your XA, where your hand is actually now or currently now, okay? So that means that you need to move the hand from here to there, okay? So what I'm saying is that this is the control law that you would want to implement when you want to move your hand from a desired position that's specified by you, okay, compared against the actual position of the hand that is computed by the forward kinematics, multiplied by the gain and take the J inverse, okay? Take the J inverse of that, then you will be able to compute the delta Q. So that means that as you move this one, as you compute this one, the hand will move incrementally like that incrementally, maybe I should change the, it will move slowly because the movement is incremental like that, slowly, then move again slowly like that, move again slowly like that because it will take several iterations. It doesn't jump immediately to here. Control will take over and then it will be an incremental movement until it reaches the desired location, okay? Like that. So now, in order to go there, we need to update the joint angles. So the update of the joint angles is like this. So now, what is your current J? Okay, what is your current Q? Multiplied by the delta Q, which is computed by this one. And then now you compute your new Q, okay? This is the new angle. So that means that in order to be able to move to the new Q, you need to replace this delta Q with this. Okay. This is already known. And then given the current Q, and then you update the new Q. So now you keep on doing this. So that means that it is an iteration until, until your error here becomes small. Okay, so we will do again, we will discuss again later, but let me, I'm just giving you an overview of what's going on. Okay, these are the simple uh, computations in order to go to reach the desired hand location that is specified by the user. Okay, before we go into a lot of details, let's continue on to, to describe what is the Jacobian matrix. And how, because the only part here that is not defined is the Jacobian matrix. So now the Jacobian matrix is this. So as we mentioned already, that when you take the derivative of the output of the hand movement, Y is equal to the Jacobian multiplied by the increment in the joint angles, okay? So if you take, the, if you take this function here to the other side of the equation, that means that the partial of Y with respect to the partial of Q is equal to the Jacobian matrix. That's how you compute the Jacobian. You take this one underneath. So that means your Jacobian is equal to the partial of Y with respect to the partial of Q. 
you take the derivative with respect to Q. So what does it mean? Y is this forward kinematics of Q. So that is the forward kinematics in terms of the Q divided by the partial of the forward kinematics divided by the partial of the Q. Okay, in matrix form, it is this actually. So that means the forward kinematics take the partial with respect to Q1. This is the first. Okay, if you have two, if you have two uh, two angles, then you're you're going to finish up to here. If you have two joints, so partial of forward kinematics with respect to theta one. Okay, and partial of the forward kinematics. Okay, with in the X. Okay. Forward kinematics, this is theta one, that is the first component of theta one. This is the X with respect to Q1, with theta one, X with respect to Q2. And here, Y with respect to Q1 and Y with respect to Q2. Okay. Okay, let's continue. I hope that this let's give you some idea of what's going on. So now this is the step. Yeah. When you do uh, these are the steps or the uh, should do code when you want to do inverse kinematics. Okay, so Q is your theta one and theta two. Okay, then you compute the forward kinematics of theta one and theta two. Okay, you compute your x one and x two. And what is this forward kinematics? We have already shown you this. That's the forward kinematics. Okay, x as a function of theta one and theta two, y as a function of theta one and theta two. That's the forward kinematics. Okay, so that is done. Okay, then now you specify your desired x and desired y, and x and y is computed based on that. So that's taken care of. Kp you can specify to be 0 0.1. That's okay, or you can specify it to something else. And what is your Jacobian? In this case, we, can, we are using Jacobian transpose just to simplify things, or we can use Jacobian inverse. Okay, for now, just use Jacobian transpose so that you can you don't need to deal with uh, with singularity. Now uh, you have, and then you compute the delta the delta Q. So then the delta Q is taken here, is used to update your current Q. Okay, until your error term here is less than 0 0.1, okay? If it's less than 0 0.1, then you exit. If it's still greater than, you go back here, you go back here, compute again, compute again, compute again, forward kinematics, compute again, use that here, and then compare the results, compute the Jacobian, take the inverse of that, uh, take the transpose of the Jacobian, update the delta Q, update the Q, check, this one, if it's small, if not, then you go back. Is there any question? Okay, now the question, the remaining question is what is your, what is your Jacobian? What is your J? Well, in this case, it is an analytical J that we can compute, yeah? So we mentioned already that J is what? The J, well, go back here. The J is your, okay. The partial of, partial of the forward kinematics Q with respect to the Q. So in this case here, we'll just rewrite this one. Okay, so now let's rewrite it here. If you can see it, J is equal to the partial of the forward kinematics equation Q with respect to partial of Q. Okay, so if you take it one by one, so you have partial of the forward kinematics in terms of the X. Okay, with respect to theta one. 
Okay, and then partial of the forward kinematics with respect to X, partial with respect to theta one, partial of forward kinematics with respect to Y, partial of theta two. I'm just rewriting what is that matrix form, the one on the other slide. For you to understand exactly just the way it is. Okay. So what is that? Well, the forward kinematics equation is given to you. Where is it? There. Okay. So given this x with respect to theta one, what is this? Okay, partial of r, partial of x, fx with respect to theta one. What is that? So you clear everything. Okay, now let's just discuss here. Partial of fx with respect to theta one. What is that? We're going to compute it analytically. Here, this is fx. And this is fy. With respect to theta one, what is that? L1, the derivative of cosine of theta, theta one is what? Minus sine theta one, yeah? Plus theta one, that's one, plus this part here. So L2 what? The derivative of that minus sine of theta one plus theta two. Then derivative of theta one, which is just one. Okay. Now partial of fx with respect to theta two. Okay, we're almost finished. Okay, then we will discuss this one more in the next uh, in the next meeting. But for now, let's just compute it. So L one or no? So this is not. This is not dependent on theta two, so this is zero in this case. So now this is L two because it's only dependent on this one theta two. So L two derivative of that is minus sine theta one plus theta two. Okay, there. That's that one. Then I will leave it up to you to. You want me to still compute this one? Huh? Mr. Imago? Oh. Okay, compute. Partial of FI with respect to theta one, what is that? What is this? L1 times derivative of sine is what? Cosine theta one. Plus L2 derivative of sine cosine theta one plus theta. Okay, then partial of Fy with respect to theta two is equal to then L1. Cosine, ah, no, this is no, no more, that's zero. So it's not dependent on theta two, only here. L2 cosine theta one plus theta two. Okay? So yes, okay, therefore is what? Your J is equal to what? This one, 
this one, that one, that one. Or let me just write it so that it will be clear to you. Partial of Fx with respect to partial of theta one, partial of Fx with respect to partial of theta one, partial of Fy with respect to partial of theta one, partial of Fy with respect to partial of theta one. Okay, now let me get your attention here. This part here, the first row is about X, yeah? That's the X component. Second row is about the Y. That's the Y component, that's Y. Everything, the X, the X component with respect to theta one, here is theta one, and the second one is theta two, that's it. Then the Y component with respect to theta one, Y component with respect to theta two, okay? There. If there are more angles, then you have to compute here with respect to theta three, okay? Then with respect to theta four, like that, that's all, okay? The X component with respect to theta three, the X component with respect to theta four, that's it, okay? You understand? Any questions? Okay, if we don't have questions, let's continue. I run the octave example. If we run out of time, then we'll just continue next meeting, okay? If this one, if the if this one will cut off, we will continue next meeting. You run out of time. Or if you have questions. So let me run the update. So you have update example robot three and robot four. So robot three. So we are going to write, again, you're going to write a program to do the inverse kinematics. So now we specify the hand. Okay, let me just run this one. We specify the hand of the robot to move here. See, look. So it started from here. The hand started from here and it moves towards this direction because this is the hand that I want. This is the hand position that I want it to move. Okay, this is done by the inverse kinematics, uh, the inverse kinematics uh, program. Okay. As you can see, the joints move from here, from this. You, you plot the joint theta one and theta two, and then the joint moves from here, from here to there, okay? This one doesn't matter much a lot to us now because these are just a solution that's computed by our algorithm, okay? What matters to us more is how the hand moves from the current location down to the desired location, okay? okay let me do that one more time. Okay, starting from here, it moves here. This is the current configuration, the joint angles. Now it starts from me, move here, and then it will continue moving, 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 down, 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 closer to the, closer to the current hand location. Okay, until it reaches there, finish, okay? And if there are four joints, I, I, sorry, if there are three joints, this is how it will look like. Same thing, it moves from here to there and moves to here until it reaches 
that current location. Okay, so all we need to do is implement the inverse kinematics and you'll be able to specify your hand, desired hand location until you reach the, until you reach the, uh, the final destination where your desired hand location is. Okay, and then it will just compare your current hand location against the desired and then you compute that algorithm that I showed you will give you the computation necessary for you to move from your desired location. This is the uh, this is the final result. This algorithm that I showed you will help you compute. Yeah, this this part. This is the iteration part that you have to keep on repeating until your error is less than zero point one. Okay, so you compute forward kinematics, you compute the delta Q using the difference of the hand location against the current hand location, multiplied by the J transpose where your J is computed based on how I showed you before, and then you increment your current Q. And then with that new Q, you compare with this, you compare with this input, okay? You compare with this new X and Y location, there's this new Q because this is theta one and theta two is your Q. Okay. And then you compute if it's the norm is less than 0 0.1, you continue compute, you continue going back to this iteration. Okay, compute again, and then you compute until your error is small. If your error is less than 0 0.1, you quit, and then you will be your result will be similar to what I have your result will be similar to this one. Any questions? Okay, if you have questions, uh, now I think we're running out of time, but I will entertain questions. Please prepare your questions for next meeting. Okay? okay otherwise, you're ready for ex lab exercise number one, and then I will give you lab exercise number two on Friday using inverse kinematics. Okay. If there are no other questions, let me unshare. Stop sharing and then uh, take pictures again. Okay, smile, smile, smile. That's a nice smile. Okay, there you go. Okay, so I will give you 